Toronto police are now investigating a far-right news network that, of course, were behind a truck that was displaying hatred on the streets of Toronto. Now, I'm going to get to the uh, video of this truck playing a very bizarre clip and the clear intention behind it. First here, I want to acknowledge that there's this is there has been, and this is the same across, I believe, many cities across the world, just a massive surge in hate crimes against both Jews and Muslims. So in the case of Jews, there has been this attempt by anti-Semites to attach what the Israeli government is doing to all Jewish people, which is completely insane. To equate a government with Jewish people is in itself anti-Semitic. Whether you are criticizing the government or defending it, you should not be equating the two. The two are very clearly separate. But anti-Semites are taking this opportunity to spew their hatred. And on the other side of that, you have you know, ongoing hatred of, of Arabs, of Muslims, of Palestinians from, um, from you know, n not even just the far right, but you see it from liberals. Now, I want to get to this, uh, the clip here. So the National Council of Canadian Muslims posts the clip here saying an advertising van was spotted in Toronto inciting a fear of Muslims in Canada. This is extremely dangerous messaging and should not be condoned. We have seen Islamophobic hate kill in Canada, including in Ontario. This public campaign is pure Islamophobia and hate. We are asking Toronto police to investigate this public campaign and who is trying to incite hate. We are expecting all of our leaders to condemn this form of hate in uh, Toronto. This needs to stop. So I'll play the video in a second here. I just want to acknowledge or, or state here. I have seen several leaders come out to, to condemn this. And the hatred that is spewed at them, so I saw the Green Party leader, the Ontario Green Party leader, the former NDP uh, leader, um, both come out to uh, condemn this, and their, their replies on their tweet are, are insane. You have paying blue check marks, whether they're real people or they're bots, filling up their replies with just pure hatred. Pure Islamophobic hatred. It is. It has been wild to see. As someone who who was who's been an active user on Twitter since almost the beginning, it has been wild to see just how far down the hole this platform has become since Elon Musk took over. It is absolutely disgusting. It, the only reason I still use it is because of posts like this. That there's still information. There are still people out there that are reliable posting stuff on there. But it it is often drowned out by the absolute garbage that fills up the majority of the platform. It's disgusting. But I wanna share this video here. So this is, uh, this is the van, as you'll see, playing the video. All right, wake up, Canada. You are under siege because there are people praying and those at a protest waving a Palestinian flag as Palestinians are currently being bombarded. Like, I have to, first of all, question the efficacy of something like this. Like, is this going to... Is the intention here to turn people against, um, you know, Palestinians, Arabs, Muslims? I, you could argue maybe that's the intention. I don't know how successful they really are in just playing this video. The, the real impact of this is making, making visible minorities feel unsafe. That is the actual impact of, of a uh, video like this. And I'll get to, you know, just the a report that came out late last year about the level of of Islamophobia that is present in Canada and its impact on the Arab, the Muslim, uh, and Palestinian communities. Like, it, it is just, it is wild to see, you know, this is a country that is built on multiculturalism. It, it is the heart of what Canada should be. 
And then you have groups like this using this, you know, using these sorts of messages and uh, props like this to make people feel unsafe. Now, this uh, reaction here initially, this is before we discovered who was behind it, which is, again, a far-right news network. But before that was discovered, Mohamed Faki, who is, I believe, the co-founder of Paramount Fine Foods, his title here is executive chair. So uh, he writes, up to $25,000 reward. I'm not sure if this has been issued. <laughs> I'm not sure who discovered it was Rebel. It may have just been the police. It... I think Rebel themselves came out and said it was them. So at least they did in the in the CBC report that I'll get to in a second here. So it's possible no one's getting this reward. But he writes here, it has been two days since this clear incitement of hate occurred on Toronto streets. And he's offering a reward for information on that. So the, the reason I'm sharing this is because this is often what the community feels they have to do. Because incidents like this often are not properly investigated unless there is an uproar, unless there is enough media attention. In this case, there has been a lot of media attention, which I think is why the police are, were very quick to comment on this. But incidents like this often, not necessarily you know, this one in terms of a van, but um, you know, hate-motivated incidents often aren't filmed. And if they aren't on film, if there isn't a clear record of it happening, they often are not investigated. And it, in many cases, often aren't even reported because of the fear that it's not going to be taken seriously. So why even go through the process of reporting something if you fear you're just going to be, uh, you know, both wasting your time, but also maybe feel in danger yourself if you go and report it. But I just want to acknowledge Mohammed Fakih here because he he is, uh, he's done great work within the community. This is from uh, 2017. Madam Speaker, I rise today to recognize an outstanding Canadian. After the tragic Quebec mosque shooting, Mohamed Faki offered to cover costs of the funeral for all six victims and repairs to the mosque. When asked why, he said, that's what Islam taught me and that's what Canada taught me. Mr. Faki is known for his generosity. Last year, he started an initiative to hire dozens of Syrian refugees. He also supports groups like Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation, Cops for Cancer, Mississauga Food Bank, Sheridan College, Ryerson University, and True Patriot Love, just to name a few. So look, we shouldn't have to live in a society where we have to rely on entrepreneurs uh, with money to, to address situations like this. But unfortunately, because there is a gap, and just the, it's not even just the gap, it's just the, the, the level of hatred that is being spewed. There are... Uh, oftentimes we have to rely on individuals like this to, um, to, you know, or we have to rely on their generosity to address this sort of hatred in, in a variety of ways. So Mohamed Faki has been a, um, a great person in that sense. Now, this is the Senate report. This, before I even get to the actual, you know, discovering of who's behind that, that truck, this came out late last year, in November. Senate report on Islamophobia says urgent action needed to reverse rising tide of hate. Human Rights Committee report took a year, involved 21 public meetings and 138 witnesses. I just want to highlight a few things from this report. The report said the committee was disturbed to hear that incidents of Islamophobia are a daily reality for many Muslims, that one in four Canadians do not trust Muslims, and that Canada leads the G7 in terms of targeted killings of Muslims motivated by Islamophobia. Let me say that again. Canada leads the G7 in this area. The report found that Muslim women have become the primary targets when it comes to violence and intimidation because they are easily recognizable from their attire. As a result, many are afraid to leave their homes for work, school, or other activities. And as a result of that, Arab women have the highest unemployment rate of any demographic group in, uh, in Canada. And the report found that hate-based information being spread on social media remains a growing problem with more than 3,000 anti-Muslim social media groups or websites active in Canada. This is a major issue. And as I was alluding to earlier, Mohammed Hashim, executive director of the Canadian Race Relations Foundation, is quoted in the report telling the committee that only 1% 
of reported hate crimes are reported to police, and only a fraction of those result in charges. This goes to, you know, even data about hate crimes doesn't really give us the full picture of the problem because many hate crimes are simply not reported. Now, of course, as I said, Rebel News Network was behind this. In case you're not familiar with them, this is Canada's far right, I believe they're just only online, uh, network. In a phone interview with CBC News, Rebel News owner Ezra Levant said the ad was created by a group called Canadians Opposed to the Occupation of Our Streets and Campuses. Quite the name for a group. Levant would not divulge the identity of anyone behind the group, nor confirm if it is based in Toronto. Uh, th this is amazing, his quote here. They're worried about violence, and they have every right to be. This truck, this, so this is from January, or sorry, July 18th. The day before, the day before that happened, this happened. A man showed up at an Islamic school and broke inside to intimidate children. Pathetic and horrific for someone to scream racist slurs at kids in grade three. We need to see our leaders stand up and commit action on the rise of Islamophobia. The 17th, the day before. This is the hatred being spewed. The man proceeded to make hate-related comments, and upon leaving the building, he ripped up an English copy of the Quran that he brought with him. <laughs> it's just... This, this is what people fear. It's that you have absolute, nut, like people that are completely nuts, latch on to this sort of uh, Islamophobic sentiment, this sort of hatred. And then they go on to do acts like this. And of course, we've seen ex many examples in Canada of much worse. But this is the kind of stuff that is, that is encouraged, or I should say that is incited by the hatred that is spewed by many of these uh, so-called news organizations. So in a post, and this again is the real reason behind this truck, in a post on Rebel News website, Levant confirmed police are investigating and also pointed readers to a fundraising page set up for the truck to help me pay for our lawyer to fight this police investigation for fundraising. Spewing hatred for fundraising. So police are investigating it. You know, I guess we'll have to wait and see where this all goes. But it is just, it has been exhausting. It's been exhausting for me as somebody who is not impacted, clearly, by the kind of hatred being spewed, either at uh, Jewish people or at, at Arabs. But it, it, to, for, for it to be exhausting for me as someone covering this, I can't even imagine what it's like for those individuals that are actually being targeted in these sorts of hate-motivated attacks. 